podcast. I don't know what episode this is. It's definitely our second season. We've been on, on a five-ish month hiatus during the off season, letting you guys uh, enjoy not seeing our beautiful faces. I'm Luke Sherman, joined as always by Matt Brown. Uh, lot to talk about, though. Ohio State football is a little more than a week away. Certainly the season can't get here soon enough, and plenty of Ohio State news. The biggest uh, in yesterday's news would have been the uh, the charges against Bradley Roby, or that the charge, singular charge, of misdemeanor Class B disorderly conduct charge, which had previously been battery, a Class A misdemeanor, which would have been far more serious, but was reduced by the Bloomington Police Department after reviewing video of the incident in which a apparently inebriated Bradley Roby returned to the scene of a bar he'd been ejected from uh, either seeking his friends or trying to regain access to the bar. Some kind of confrontation would happen with a, a bouncer who went ahead and accused Roby of some sort of physical conduct in a way that I guess the video chest. evidence. Yeah. yeah, you know, bouncers are huge, strong guys, and granted, Roby, you know, is is probably a very athletic, low body fat, muscular type dude. Even though he's, you know, not what I would consider a large man, um, it still definitely seemed the, the case of a bouncer, perhaps. Not saying that it was a pro IU sort of sentiment, but perhaps like an anti jock or anti out of town visiting jock sort of sentiment. And nonetheless, the video sort of lowered the charges and ultimately led them to today them being conditionally dismissed. Uh, all Ruby needs to do is stay out of trouble for a year and complete some sort of police order, you know, probably community service type thing. And I, you know, Roby's a good kid. This is that was a really out of the ordinary sort of yeah. incident that occurred. So I expect him to be back, but. Uh, back, I guess, in the good graces of the law. He'll certainly be back for week two. Uh, uh, Urban Meyer did go ahead and suspend him for one game. It's, that could grow based on the outcome of his pretrial hearing, which is set to begin next week, or be held next week, I should say, uh, before the Buffalo game. But that's been canceled as the charges have been uh, conditionally dismissed. So now uh, I think, you know, the Ro I don't think Meyer's going to waive Roby's suspension altogether. And this probably will hurt Roby's chances to be a captain, which should be announced possibly later today. Uh, yeah. But however, in this situation, we're going to find ourselves with Duran Grant having to move up to the number one corner spot against the UB Bulls, and Armani Reeves filling in at, at number two, which uh, after missing some time with injury and mostly being a, a Piranha special teams type guy, uh, should be interesting. You said before our broadcast and kind of our pre-production meeting, you didn't have any strong feelings about Reeves. Yeah, you know, real quick before we before we go back to talking about Reeves, there's one other thing I wanted to touch on uh, okay. when, when discussing the, these legal proceedings. And I think the way that, that Roby's case has developed over the past several weeks is a really important case study and why when we're talking about the uh, legal situations for a lot of student athletes, how it's really important to not not jump to conclusions. These are, I mean, it, it's it's... You know, it, it may be fulfilling or, or easy to, oh, my gosh, this guy might potentially be charged with something. You know, let's clearly assume that he's guilty and, there's, you know, should we kick him off the team and everything. But there's, you know, there's there's different witness testimony. There's often video of these events that have to get released. And clearly we've seen how the narrative could have changed from Urban Meyer is history's greatest monster to, you know, two of the, of the biggest offseason incidents at Ohio State have led to drastically diminished importance, legally speaking, than what they might have initially appeared to be on the onset. You know, not, let's not, let's yeah. not kid ourselves. Urban Meyer is still history's greatest monster. Every additional Fact. killing that shows up <laughs> on Aaron Hernandez's track, street, track record is exactly directly correlated to Urban Meyer's negligence and letting Hernandez have a lawless free-for-all killing spree. Uh, but I digress. No, I, you know, I, I certainly agree. We know plenty about video evidence. I'm going to go ahead and draw a diagram here, um, like a certain uh, reporter from Columbus. I just, um, if she's watching this, which man, that would, that would be something. She should, if she's watching this, she's more than welcome to come on our podcast and draw but, diagrams of football plays weekly. By all means, or please. If she, if she, if she can obtain any other additional uh, video evidence of scenes involving football players in clubs <laughs> with numbers in their names. We will let her draw as many diagrams as she would like. I digress. Reeves, um, for me, is not a guy that, you know, he's a Massachusetts product, um, best friends with Cam Williams, I believe they're practically brothers. Uh, you know, he's a talented guy, but Buffalo is, I think we're kind of also mentioning off the air that this isn't really a situation where if Reeves does have some limitations as a, as a guy still relatively new to the program, or I shouldn't say new, I mean, he's he's got time under his belt, and he's been through this is you know multiple Camp Myers at this point, but uh, for a guy without a ton of maybe on the field playing experience, this is actually a good opportunity for him. Completely and agree. The other exciting thing is the twos. That's that's where I'm most excited, which I believe are Eli Apple and Gary and Conley, a pair of freshmen, yeah. uh, with Cam Burrows not far behind that. Other big story, I guess, in terms of starting. Um, 
depth chart type announcements. We'll get more probably at Urban Meyer's press conference next Monday. Um, one of the big news is that Tyvis Powell officially clinches the star, which is the uh, sort of nickelback, like hybrid linebacker running linebacker running back, linebacker safety, linebacker running back would be super hybrid. Uh, <laughs> Dontre <laughs> Wilson will be playing both linebacker and running back just because yeah. he can. YOLO. I, would, um, I would hate to see any of those guys have to tackle anybody, but certainly I think in this situation, Powell's a guy that really proved his merits. He's a guy that everyone loves. He's basically interviewed uh, or done interviews with pretty much every pay outlet, free site, blog on the planet. Very um, generous. So everyone, everyone loves him for being outgoing <laughs> and yeah, very generous with his time, certainly. But good on him. That kid worked hard. He was a star this spring. Had a great summer to boot. Um, you know, you get we saw these pictures of these kids that were just completely rebuilt under Mick Marotti, and I think that you know, like Powell might have been a guy that if you told me he was going to play like a hybrid safety position coming out of high school, I would have said, "Are you on crack?" But these guys have uh, strength and conditioning their way into being able to do that. That's certainly uh, an exciting development. Um, this is shifting gears here from kind of personnel issues from a depth chart perspective to personnel issues from more of an injury one. Uh, not a good week for Ohio State last week. A lot of attrition. Um, I guess the recruit next probably in a very cynical fashion would be excited about the potential of scholarships opening up. That's a little crass. I mean, we can take a look at the math because that is something that we follow the long-term development of the program. Yeah. You know, the coaches are certainly heartbroken in these situations because these guys are, in, a, in essence, kind of having their, green, their dreams curtailed. Um, but nonetheless, you know... Let's focus on the, I guess, situation in hand, and that's Blake Thomas, a tight end, had a nerve issue in his neck. Adam Griffin, the son of legendary running back Archie Griffin, two-time Heisman Trophy winner. Adam's career is over with a shoulder injury. And Jamie Wood, who was a fifth-year senior who was coming back from um, what was supposed to be a career-ending injury, wasn't able to ever fully get past a shoulder injury in his own right. So he's done, too. Wood was graduating. Griffin was a fourth-year junior who would have had one year of eligibility remaining, and Thomas was, I believe, a redshirt freshman who had yeah. four years of eligibility in front of him. So, especially Thomas, like, that's just never really even getting a chance to see the field after coming out of Cleveland San Ignatius is, is heartbreaking. I know his dad was on a couple different websites commenting about the yep. situation, and, and that's really unfortunate for him and his family. And, and hopefully, you know, if it's based, it sounds like based on the diagnosis, there was a chance if he took one hit the wrong way, he could have been paralyzed. So you can't yeah, take any chances. And it's, football does not matter when <laughs> paralyzation comes into play. Yeah, I mean, like, on, uh, if you look at the, the silver lining here, I know how great is it that he has access to this particular, you know, such a great medical staff, and that was yep. caught preemptively. It, it's, the other it's thing, obviously... too, is because yeah. it happened in a football context, I believe the university is obligated to, at least for the duration of his time as a student, they have to cover it. Now, I know the yep. NCAA and the university cut you off dry, high and dry, as soon as you're done, but he'll be medical redshirted for the rest of his career. He'll be able to still get his, uh, his education on a scholarship paid for, um, you know, obviously it's not, I doubt scholarship money is an issue for the Griffins, and, uh, you know, Jamie Wood is probably at or near his degree requirements, so hopefully, uh, you know, these guys can get their educations, um, begin the next chapters of their lives, and, and the good news is with their Ohio State, you know, background and network, I'm going to guess they're going to be able to get set up pretty well in a situation professionally that works for them, so, um, Wish them certainly all the best and certainly all the, the health in the world. It's almost in a sense, you know, as much as we love watching these guys sacrifice themselves physically and, and in some cases mentally, um, you know, just the sheer how hard it is to train themselves, put themselves through two days and things like that. I mean, these guys are just 18 to 22 year olds. Um, but the end product is something that we all really love and enjoy. Football is is great. Um, let's just not think about, I guess, the physical <laughs> consequences, but it's almost better in a sense that these dudes, you know, will be able to, like, have full, hopefully, use of their physical um, yeah. extremities as opposed to, like, some of these NFL guys, you know, they get their dream, but at what cost, you know? I guess that's the one other silver line. <laughs> but, God, that's that's bleak. Um, we, we yeah, did say hey, that thanks, we, David Zirin. Like, this, yeah, this is clearly hey, gone hey, in a... Um, and Life a, is a, meaningless, and then the sun <laughs> explodes, and we all die. Um, yeah, and it's all built on uh, involuntary free labor. You know, this is this is great. Factory, yeah, factory the NCAA here. is a giant exploitive, um, bureaucratic mess. Okay, but we digress. Yeah. So we did say that we would mention for our recruiting fans. Since recruiting is sort of in the lifeblood of what Land Grant Holy Land does, the ramifications. Jamie Wood, he's done. Um, Ohio State has to stay under 82 scholarships for one more year. It, due to NCAA sanctions as a result of the uh, Tackgate and Bobby DiGeronimo uh, scandals. So in lieu of that, um, they were already kind of at or near their cap with 17 commitments, uh, especially following Curtis Samuel. I believe that was the cap. Uh, and if Bradley Roby leaves, uh, which he said he has done after this year no matter what, yeah. uh, that would have been the 17th. Because 
Attrition is, I think, subtracting seven, um, or a net seven anyway. Uh, plus, with Cameron Johnson coming on as a freshman, eating a scholarship after there previously wasn't one there on special teams. Although apparently he's a beast. Uh, Kerry Combs today is going to be really special, and I'm really excited to see him play. Uh, apparently, apparently really he's fast. yeah, exactly. Yeah, so right. we're gonna, yeah, we that's saw that's another other wrinkle to the playbook. Wasn't here. wasn't Andy Groom once the fastest player on the on the championship Buckeye team? Like he's supposed to around like a four three or something insane like yeah. that. I, mean, I think the punters at Ohio State often have sneaky speed. <laughs> Well, Matt, I believe, froze on us there, so I'll just go ahead and monologue and get back to kind of the, the ramifications until he's able to rejoin us, if he's able to rejoin us. Um, in terms of Griffin and Thomas, um, because they're going to be medical registered, those scholarships will go back into the pool, taking Ohio State, I believe, up to 18 and 19, unofficially at 18 with with Roby. Um, the numbers we've been hearing pretty much you know, from any good source and any expert on, in the field that we've talked to has been around 22, give or take. Um, you know, There's always the chance that there could be some kind of Qualifications issues. Knock on wood. We saw that nearly come to play with, um, you know, Donovan Munger, who ultimately wound up getting his academic eligibility, but then is going to have to sit out this following fall due to a blood clot. Another guy who, you know, we're definitely thinking about and wishing him all the best. Hopefully, he's able to take that medical red shirt, come back for his full four years of eligibility, and really be an impact player on the defensive line or offensive line, which apparently he projects it either. Mm -hmm. um, but just in terms of um, you know, the numbers in the short term, it looks like Ohio State has room for about two more. Could be a Mike Gisecki, could be a Noah Brown, who everyone's hearing is uh, kind of, t you know, wanted to commit to Rutgers, but is, I guess people in his inner circle want him to go to Ohio State. Yeah, we'll just have to see what happens from there. But, um, you know, kind of in terms of the more, let's say... Long-term ramifications, I mean, we knew that Marcus Baugh, the freshman that was coming in, um, was going to be probably the third tight end in spite of his, his legal issues and some suspensionary issues. And we know that um, JT Moore was being moved from, from the defensive line to play tight end, maybe more of a blocking tight end. It's hard, I guess, to, to envision sort of... Um, you know, what the, the situation that, other than the defensive line being completely loaded and having a lot of depth, um, and him moving to a position that he didn't have a ton of experience at the college level at all, uh, as a, in terms of what we know about him practicing, but more moves um, to tight end as well, which kind of alleviates the loss of Thomas. It's still a bit interesting to see what Thomas could have done. Uh, the Buckeyes are loaded to tight end right now with Nick Vanette and Jeff Hireman, who Urban Meyer and Tom Herman have both alluded, or could be the best one-two combination of tight end in the country. Kind of takes you back to thoughts of the two tight end sets that you know Florida utilized, and certainly um, Urban Meyer's friend and you know coaching colleague Bill Belichick at the New England Patriots prior to Aaron Hernandez's unspeakable um, accident landed him in a world of, of legal troubles, deservedly so. Um, they leverage two tight ends like nobody's business, and Ohio State supposedly has been has been focusing on figuring out ways within the context of their power run spread offense to to factor back in two tight ends. I'm going to go ahead and say Matt Brown may be rejoining us. I, I see a picture of Matt. Matt, we, can we hear you? Matt, are you with I, us? I, I, hope I'm, I hope I'm with you. I don't I don't know what happens here. Um, Technical difficulties. I mean, it's live. This podcast is is off the cuff. We do minimal of any editing. Um, yeah. So live and direct. I went ahead and monologue and explained the roster situations. So we're good and beyond <laughs> that. Let's shift gears from rosters and scholarship cynicism. Definitely wish the best all the way to Adam Griffin, Blake Thomas, and Jamie Wood. Let's talk about who gets the nod at tailback with Rod Smith surprisingly suspended. Uh, we won't go too much into that, but the rumors have something to do with him quitting the team, unlike some rumors surrounding Chris Fields from last year. Um, yeah. Allegedly, from what we're hearing from third or fourth sources, you know, who knows what, how, how, how accurate or, or whatnot these rumors are, but... Uh, supposedly Rod Smith got really frustrated during a conditioning session. He quit the team, then came, like realized he made a mistake immediately, apologized, and asked for a spot back, and they gave it to him conditionally. It's amazing in this day and age, internet age, that that was kept a secret for six plus months, almost seven months. So credit to Urban Meyer and company. I know that if I ever have a secret, uh, I will tell them, hey, Aaron Hernandez joke right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... We got some talented guys at back. We know that um, Jordan Hall will probably be, you know, the six-year senior is probably going to be more of a pivot, the Percy Harvin type role. Dontre Wilson, a um, the, everyone's been talking about Dontre. He's really been the star. Did, did, of, you, did you know that he's fast? Apparently, he's fast. That's, that's the rumor. That's the rumor. I've seen this on Twitter a couple of times. Can neither yeah. confirm nor deny that he's fast, but he's yeah. a burner, and he will be also playing the pivot role. Maybe get some carries from from you know out of the backfield as well, but. You know, Rod Smith would have been the guy. I guess we're looking at Briante Don, Briante Don, but 
worn ball. Missed last year with an injury. Um, everyone's been glowing about him, saying that he's looked really good in scrimmages and the like. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm on Team Warren Ball. I, team Warren I, Ball? Yeah, I saw some of the stuff that he did in high school. I think that he, you know, all, by all accounts, has had, has had a great spring. I would be surprised if we don't see a couple of carries um, in, in this Buffalo game. And, and that's kind of one of the nice things here about having so many young skill players where there's often a little bit of a learning curve coming in to have perhaps more of a softer right. schedule where we don't necessarily have to depend on a workhorse back to get 25 carries to make sure that we win the game, that we can kind of spread that out a little bit and experiment, see what works. Maybe, maybe, maybe Ezekiel gets a couple of touches, maybe, you know... Yeah, Ezekiel is yeah, somebody that yeah. the people that have seen him have said that this guy looks like a junior or senior college football player. and You know, he's what? Probably like three or four months removed from prom. I mean, this kid from St. Louis is also just a freak speed burner athlete. And yeah. So when you factor in, I mean, I guess people are saying, like, now Ohio State shallow at running back with Rod Smith and Carlos Hideout. It's like, maybe Dude, not I, really. I, 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 it's crazy to think about just how deep this particular position group here is. I mean, if you, right. I, I, mean I, I don't think it's really hyperbolic to say that Warren Ball probably starts for – Half the Big Ten, like a third of the Big Ten, is the, uh, people who are like four and five down on the depth chart would be would be like serious. If you, if you just look at like st- like recruiting star levels, would be like serious contributors for a lot of other schools. No, I mean Ohio State just by virtue of being kind of a college football power program or have a glutton or they're gluttons rather at the position and at all the skill positions really. Wide receiver has been one that maybe they sort of like I guess. Is a, Habit in the Trussell era would kind of get the three-star type guys and develop them, like Dane Sansenbacher. Yeah. Um, Anthony Gonzalez, I think, was actually like a three-star tight end, if I remember correctly. He turned into a wide receiver. Yeah. Um, out, of, like uh, out of Cleveland. But now we've got these crazy speed and like four and five stars at every position. It feels kind of like being an Alabama fan. No, I'm just kidding. But it does feel sort of <laughs> like a video game. You know, when you play yeah. like NCAA football, uh, maybe RIP in that regards too. Um, you know, you'd always try and get this like superfluous glut of talent and hope the guys wouldn't transfer. That's something that we may see in the future though that we're not accustomed to. Is like, ma- I mean, the numbers that I was just saying, Ohio State's roughly at two scholarships net, so about 19 um, is the cap class right now for the class of 2014. And if they want to get to 22, which is the numbers that that we've been sort of alluding to, is probably going to be the cap 21, 22. Um, they had to have some other guys leave the program, but you know, there, there's always Luke Roberts says that want to go to Harvard, or there are guys that, you know, Najee Murray is suspended. The initial reports that were that he was dismissed, multiple outlets reported that. We reported those reports, and Urban Meyer ultimately said he was suspended. It's yeah. still possible that you know maybe he doesn't earn his way back into Urban Meyer's good graces or is able to escape the doghouse. So. I mean, like, it, it, it's, it's a long season, and yep. people's priorities change, their life situations change, the death chart changes a little bit. Like, to be honest, I'd be a little bit surprised if everybody who's on the Ohio State running back depth chart right now, you know, stay, use, exhaust their full eligibility with the Buckeyes. And you go say that, NFL. but... I, no, I say that. LSU has somehow found a way to keep, like, any running backs from transferring, and they, like, play four all the time. So yeah, like, I mean, there are it, plenty it, of touches to go around. Possible. Yeah. And those touches may also save Braxton Miller long term because we saw last year, like literally by the end of the season, in every single game he was out for at least a series, if not longer. So they had to figure out some way to preserve him a little bit, you know, beyond sort of what they got last year. That's that, um, that's our nightmare, I think. Um, and and that's kind of what Jamal is very good. No, he, he he listen, he's very good. He's 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 your starting quarterback for I think six other at least at least five Big Ten schools, but. As good as he is, uh, you know that that next level of explosiveness is that's something that you can't really coach. Is he, you know he, he doesn't have there's 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 that there's the ex Brax factor that's really unique to Braxton and maybe three or four or five other players and who, who are playing quarterback at high level high level institutions and I I, I think there's probably going to be some time this year where you, where you know we got to pull you know a couple of series out of your ass and he can do that and not a whole lot of other guys can. Can you say that word on air? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> don't tell, don't hang tell out, my bishop. Yeah, hang out in the Holy Land is uh, is PG-13 out there. Earmuffs, if you guys um, are time travelers and can only travel back in time <laughs> about 12 seconds. Yeah. Um, but no, we so we were going to talk about after this, uh, you know, and, and I agree definitely. We were going to talk about the breakout players for 2013. But two things real quick. One on your point, 
if Braxton Miller wins the, the Heisman, which is pr- actually apparently the odds favorite right now, according to Bavada LV, uh, That's Braxton right. Miller and Genevieve Clowney are one and two after Johnny Heisman's um, interesting offseason. Uh, well, I mean, no one repeating his Heisman is is crazy talk anyway, even for somebody that good. Um, the target on his yeah. back, um, just the loss they and M had, blah, blah, blah. We know that probably wasn't going to happen. Clowney is a guy that, like, old people are like, that's not possible. But, like, anyone who's actually watched Clowney, like, since he was a high school player knows that's totally possible. South Carolina is always an IN3, 10 and 2 type team um, in the last several years. They'll be in the, in the mix in the East. SEC, like, group think alone. And if he's just, supposedly he's in much better shape last year, or this year than last year, which seems yeah, impossible. because he was clearly out of shape last yeah, year. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, there's always, like, like rumors. There's always these rumors that he was taking plays off and stuff, but I digress. If Brax Miller wins the Heisman this year, as he's projected to do at season starts, I'm going to go ahead and make the headline, X Brax won. You like that? I do. I Spoiler do. alert. The people watching or listening to the Hangout in the Holy Land are, are getting our editorial process in real time. Now, also, speaking of uh, editorial process in real time, you know, we had planned to talk about the breakout players for 2013. I'm going to punt on that football terminology there until next week. More Jim football Jessel's terminology. Friends. We're going to audible right now, and we're going to close <laughs> things, uh, and we're going to close this at this season opening, season debut podcast by talking about Ohio State's captains, which are set to be named later today. Um, I think obviously the guys that went to Chicago, they, you know, you were at Media Days, and mm-hmm. and Zach Clark, our uh, on again off again contributor, was there as well, and you know he was able to to kind of hear those guys out. Jack Muhor, the you know former in battle just a year ago, urinating in public, offensive lineman who's grown into an absolute beast at left tackle. Yeah, uh, I say quarterback Braxton Miller, and then Christian Bryant, the fiery, uh, never soft spoken safety, um, <laughs> another Glenville kid. Um, those guys were there. I'm going to guess that they're captains. That just seems like... I think Roby really did piss his chance away. He would have been a yeah. lock had he not been arrested, which is which really sucks. I mean, it's, it's both fair and... Urban was so and, mad. Yeah. Like, I, like, I mean, he was... I mean, he's mad every time. You know, he, he said this past weekend he put himself in that position. He was suspended for one game no matter what, and I'm willing yep. to concede that he probably did forfeit his, his captaincy, though Meyer hasn't said that directly. So those are three. Could be four, could be five, could only be three. I'm going to guess that they go... Five? Um, now, who those other two guys are up to interpretation? I'm going to guess C.J. Barnett as a uh, a very senior fellow safety, along with Christian Bryant, probably gets the nod, or is at least a, a front runner. And then you get the other position, like is it Corey Brown? Didn't go to media day, so that maybe seems hard to to think. Is it Jordan Hall, who's previously been a captain? Um, you know, and also so, here's so here's here's like the crazy out of left field one making all the waves on social media Guyton? last night. Kenny Guyton. Yeah, as a captain, I, I Coach I, Guyton. What do you think? I, I kind of like that. I know, I know that that uh, when I, when I asked this at, at, at media day, that that Coach Meyer emphasized the importance of leadership along the lines, and then up front, uh, you know, or up the middle rather, um, on defense. So I mean, like, you know, when we were, we're talking about specifically which players or positions groups are going to need to be showing leadership, and, and I it wouldn't surprise me if 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 the the bulk of the captaincy came from from those position groups. But I kind of like the idea of of the backup QB, um, you know, picking that up as well. It'd I be, would be, absolutely love that. Yeah. I don't think it's going to happen. It's a little spicy, but yeah. I mean, why why not? Two other names we haven't a, named. Yeah. Two other names we haven't named at all. Corey Lindsley. I think that's kind of unlikely given that he had kind of some rough stuff, although that was pre Meyer, so who knows. Yeah. Um, and then Ryan Chazier is obviously a leader in many ways. Supposedly he's been very vocal with a, a young linebacker in the core. Not necessarily young in age. I mean, Josh Perry is a returning guy. Joe Berger, walk on, who's been getting some starting reps. We'll see if that continues or if that's just like a show some love to the walk on type guys. It's been, you know, walk on's getting black stripes removed, the walk on's getting starting linebacking, you know. Rotations. We'll see. Curtis Grant, though, in the middle is supposedly night and day from last year, which is, you know, as a five star guy. It, it, well, we or we absolutely need him to be. Like, he's, yeah. he's, he's going to be an X factor, uh, you know, for, for this defense. Again, if if Shazier's the only guy at linebacker who's producing, I think there's going to be. I'm going to go ahead and, and put it on. I'm going to guess that the two that we didn't name besides the Chicago guys are CJ Barnett and Ryan Shazier. We'll see if I'm wrong. You got any official predictions? Uh, no, that. that I, I think that sounds good to me. Perfecto. Hang on, the Holy Land season two, episode one. We'll go with I don't know what total number it is. We can just make it up. Let's say episode twelve. Sure. Let's go with it. Fourteen, twelve, 12 something like that feels about right. Point is, we men. haven't been canceled yet, and we're still here. So that's 
we'll just go with that. Hey, SB Nation's making an emphasis on podcasts in 2013, 2014. You'll find us on SB Nation's uh, podcast super group now. Check yeah. out all the other great ones. I'm sorry I'm not singing um, blurred lines like Pat Vent from BHGP, <laughs> but we'll work out. We might have some musical guests this year. I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and openly speculate. The folks that do our our theme song, or rather lead-in song on the audio syndicated version, they've got a new album coming out. Right. Plus, there's a rumor that we've got an in-staff rapper now. I, I'm going to oh, I'm, I'm gonna break some news here. I'm going to confirm that. We do have an in-staff rapper. I, I don't think I'm stepping out here by saying that. Not only do we have an in-staff rapper, we have the best damn rap game of all Ohio State blogs, and I hope that you guys get a chance to participate in that. I'm excited because I'm extremely uncool, and I feel like just via association, like I'm 20% cool. I'm somebody who owns a Bare Naked Ladies CD, like unironically. So the fact that now that we have a legitimate rap game, like I'm, I'm kind of shedding away some of those like that. that this isn't like totally. rap of the one week variety. This is like no, this is like actual, yeah. <laughs> this is it's been a learn, it's been a growing experience for me as a person, and I appreciate that. That is. Probably not actually the widest rapper in the Ohio State blogosphere, but that's Matt Brown. I'm Luke Zimmerman. <laughs> Hang out in the Holy Land, Season 2, Episode 1, a week away. Go Bucks. Go Bucks.